Liz, Liz Truss, uh, obviously uh, not a, not a parliament, but at, at 10 Downing Street, uh, she's announcing uh, that she's stepping down immediately. Uh, she's talking. Uh, she's in, in consultations with Graham Brady. Graham Brady is in charge of the committee that, that determines how the Tory elections go. And part of the criticism of how uh, Prime Minister Truss was elevated to that position came in large part on how the voting went. Uh, they opened up the voting to, to members of the, the conservative party, the, the Tory party, and activists had a big say uh, on who was going to get elected. Over the past several days, when rumors swirled around that Liz Truss would be stepping down, uh, or at least pressured to step down, uh, there was much talk that the Tories had botched the election last time by opening it up to activists. And a lot of the complaints yesterday uh, had to do with the fact that that members of parliament uh, were were having to deal with someone who they didn't have confidence in uh, to, to run uh, to run Britain. Uh, and so what they're talking about doing now is with, with trust stepping down, uh, Graham Brady and the committee who determines how these elections are going to be run and who will ultimately determine who the next prime minister of Great Britain will be, will most likely keep it a closed process uh, in a process where members of parliament are going to have a large say uh, who, on who they put in charge. And it will probably be um, much less to do with a popularity contest among activists uh, and, and who's best at, at negotiating and, and, and so-called horse trading. And instead, uh, there may be more of a focus on competence. Uh, I'm reading now a breaking news from the Financial Times. Liz Truss resigns. This is by George Parker and Sebastian Payne. Liz Truss was on Thursday forced to quit as UK prime minister, drawing a dramatic close to 44 days in office, which saw her preside over an economic meltdown and catastrophic damage to the ruling Conservative Party. Truss was told to quit by senior party figures Thursday morning, leaving bitterly divided Tory MPs facing the prospect of having to choose a third prime minister in a matter of months. Think about that, a third prime minister in a matter of months. Um, government insiders confirmed that Brady, who uh, this is Sir Graham Brady, who's the chair of the 19. 22 committee and who met with Truss on Thursday morning. Uh, Brady's going to be responsible for overseeing the leadership contests. Uh, and uh, the meeting that he had with Truss was unscheduled. And Truss's ally said she requested the meeting uh, to take the temperature of the party after days of chaos. Uh, and, and of course, it has been days of chaos. We, we bumped in earlier this morning uh, with a, a, a cold open from ITV talking about uh, uh, describing one of the most chaotic days uh, that, that uh, Britain has seen in quite some time politically. Let's bring in right now Caddy Kay. She's, of course, with the BBC. Uh, and Caddy, uh, 44 days um, and uh, chaos from the beginning to the end. Yeah, you and I spoke about this the other day, Joe, how she was being compared to a lettuce and whether she had even the shelf life of a lettuce in the British papers, and it had become a meme around her premiership. Um, but there was that period after the Queen died. She had become prime minister just two days before that. She got through a massive energy bill to shore up the British, British public, and then the Queen died. And she spent 10 days really dealing with the funeral, and her premiership looked okay. She was doing all of the things that a, you would expect a prime minister to do around the time of the Queen's funeral. And then the moment that the mourning period was over, her problems began when her then chancellor announced a budget of effectively trickle-down economics and a big tax cut for the very wealthiest um, at a time of hardship in the UK. And from there on in, it has been one uncertainty, one period of chaos after another, I mean, led effectively um, by the financial markets responding to her economic plan with a, with a massive vote of no confidence in the plan itself and 
in the pound sterling, which fell at one point to almost parity with the dollar, something I have not seen uh, in my lifetime. And the Tory party, which we've, we've, we've spoken about this before, the Tory party can be ruthless. If they do not think you can lead effectively, if they do not think you can win them an election, you are out. And that seems to be the decision that the Tory party has made uh, with some very public, scathing comments about Liz Truss in the last couple of days. Um, that's, that's the decision they made about her premiership. It was going to be short, sharp, chaotic, and then it was going to end. Yeah, and, and uh, Willie, uh, BBC uh, breaking news just now uh, that the, the Tories say they will be selecting the next prime minister within the week. They are, yeah. they are not, they're, you're not going to see, uh, see them uh, dawdling around and, and rubbing their hands together. They're going to get this done. Which gets to the question of who that might be, Caddy. The reading from the New York Times piece a couple of days ago predicting this, saying this was an inevitable end for Liz Truss, but she was handpicked by Boris Johnson. Uh, and the Times writes this Miss Truss was Mr. Johnson's departing gift, a human landmine to level the ground for his own possible return. Uh, is Boris Johnson coming back as prime minister? Yeah, I mean, the, the concern, polling within the Conservative Party at the moment, the Conservative Party membership, which is this group of about 100,000 people in the UK that chooses the Prime Minister, that chose Liz Truss, suggests that Boris Johnson is the most popular successor to the woman who succeeded him over the summer. I mean, you, you couldn't make... It, this is Trumpian level of chaos in British politics. Um, he's only recently left 10 Downing Street. Uh, he has been on a mission to make money. He's giving speeches around the United States for six-figure sums of money and apparently had been wanting to do that. Is it too soon, I think, is the question. And did, did Liz Truss not last long enough? If she had lasted a year or so, um, could she come back? But the reason they want to choose a successor very quickly is because they don't want a general election. The polling at the moment puts the Labour Party ahead uh, by somewhere around 10 points in one of the polls that I'd seen recently. And they don't want to go to the British public um, to, to see what the British public's vote is on this. And so they have to come up with somebody. Another speculation, if it's not Boris Johnson, the man who has just become Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, Jeremy Hunt, former foreign minister, well known um, around European circles uh, and has, has managed actually to stabilize sterling and to stabilize the financial market since he came into office a couple of days ago. So he might be another potential successor. But as you say, they want to choose somebody fast and they do not want a general election. So, Caddy, Jeremy Hunt, as you just indicated, he's right there, and he is basically running the economy now, having overturned Liz Truss's proposals for the economy. But my question to you is, the roots of this chaos, in the roots of this chaos, does Brexit arise again? I don't think Brexit, Mike, <clears throat> arises as another referendum. Is it there is an issue in the British economy? It certainly is. Um, to some extent, the impact of Brexit got clouded by uh, the COVID pandemic, by the war in Ukraine, which have also all had their own impact on the British economy and all global economies. I don't think the British public, having seen the bitter divisions that Brexit caused, I mean, really, you had families not speaking to each other, uh, friendships broken up over this. Nobody, my impression, having spent a month in, in the UK just uh, around the time of the Queen's funeral is nobody wants to revisit that. That there is no appetite to to go back to the European Union and say, actually, you know what? Let's rethink this. We'd like to come back in again. And of course, having left, you know what it's like if you get divorced, Mike. If you want to have, get married again, you're going to get married on slightly different terms, and it's going to be it would be on the terms of the European Union. So I'm not sure that Britain would be able to go back into the European Union, even if the British public wanted that to be the case, um, it, un, under circumstances that were as favourable as they had been in the past. So, Caddy, is there a unifying uh, uh, member of the Conservative Party that could step mm. forward as a placeholder, a former, uh, perhaps a former Conservative prime minister? Well, I mean, who would you think of? You'd think of Boris Johnson, who left because of his own problems, right? I mean, it'd be, it would be quixotic, I suppose, is the word. 
um, for the Tories to choose the person that they had ousted. I mean, that would be odd within such a short frame time frame, even though he is still very popular around the country with rank and file conservatives. Uh, there is somebody like Jeremy Hunt, who is seen as a pair of a steady pair of hands. But the, ter the Tory party is sort of split between, for example, you know, the Home Secretary who left yesterday, who is on the right of the Conservative Party on things like immigration, on things like Brexit. Um, and there is that rump of the Conservative Party that is much more to the right of, of centrists. And, and I don't know that there is one particular unifying figure. I mean, you'd have to think of someone like Theresa May, who was prime minister before Boris Johnson, but also not deemed to have been particularly successful or unifying as a prime minister. It'll be they couldn't find somebody. I mean, I guess, Joe, to your point, they couldn't find somebody to take over from Boris Johnson, who had stellar quality and was obviously a, a unifying leader. So. I'm just wondering who that person would be now if they didn't exist last time, who is acceptable to the conservative members who choose the leader and is also acceptable to the general population of the United Kingdom when it faces when the Conservative Party has to call a general election.